Residents in Morley and Dianella are continuing their cleanup from the savage storm which generated a tornado which then tore through homes and businesses in a frightening few minutes. The city had been warned to expect a storm but the tornadoes were a destructive surprise leaving many of us asking why they're so hard to predict. Neil Bennett from the Bureau of Meteorology has some answers. I spoke with him earlier. Neil Bennett, thanks for talking with 730WA. You're welcome. This storm rolled across Perth yesterday, tornadoes touching down in a couple of northern suburbs. What really happened? Well, we had what meteorologists describe as a very unstable airstream over the whole of the Perth metropolitan area yesterday. Essentially, the atmosphere was primed to produce a lot of showery activity and thunderstorms as well. And we saw some fairly widespread activity right throughout the day. But as we move through the day, uh, we started to see one or two of the thunderstorm cells becoming much more active and uh, as we have saw uh, in the damage from yesterday, the Dianella area really did catch the brunt of that with the tornado touching down and creating the damage that we saw. Do we know why they hit then and there? The why and where, they're, they're the really difficult ones to answer. I mean, we had this very, very broad area right across the metropolitan area where the atmosphere was primed. It was ready to go. We saw some signs of that with uh, thunderstorms, some heavy showers, even hail being reported in some places as well. But why a tornado forms in one particular region at one particular time and nowhere else is really difficult to answer. The, the conditions must have been just perfect at that point, but for us to find that really perfect point uh, in such a broad area as a metropolitan area, or even indeed for the southwest of WA, uh, it's next to impossible to do that on any meaningful time scale. So we can sort of see it maybe five to ten minutes in advance, but to try and do that 24 hours in advance, it's just physically not possible. Because there were areas of activity that were just as intense in other parts of the northern suburbs, but no tornado. Well, that's exactly right. What we saw yesterday was uh, a lot of very heavy showery activity and a lot of thunderstorm activity as well. And even after the tornado passed through Dianella, we saw some really heavy cells down near the Fremantle area in the late afternoon, but nothing came of those. So it really was just the whole system coming together at just the right time to produce that tornado. So everything was on a, on a knife edge, really. Why do they look so different to the tornadoes that we see in North America? These are very, very small systems. Uh, they're different to the American cousins and they're different to some of the cousins that we see even in Australia through uh, New South Wales and Brisbane uh, and Queensland. So they're very, very small systems. They're typically only around about two to 300 metres wide. They may only have a path length of about five kilometres and last around 10 minutes. The American systems will be bigger. Uh, we'll see them on the ground sometimes two, three, four hours at a time. Uh, the path is wider uh, and the length being on the ground for much longer is considerably longer as well. So they're more easily detectable by radar but when you have such a small system that's only on the ground for 10 minutes and our radar takes 10 minutes to update, very often it'll slide through before the radar's actually picked it up. When you go back, you can find it, but in real time, it's very hard to detect these systems. Now, does that make them impossible to predict? I think if you're looking at a, a system that will say at 12.30 there's going to be a tornado in Dianella, yes, I think that is impossible. Uh, what the Bureau really aims to do is to look at the conditions of the atmosphere and to say that we think that this region is at risk. And we can do that 24 hours in advance for very strong signals as we call them. So when we're looking at a, a very deep low pressure system with very strong winds and we know that there are going to be thunderstorms embedded within that, we can pick that up two to three days out and we can give warnings of a broad area about 24 hours in advance. But what we saw yesterday was a whole region such as the Perth metropolitan area which was really right on the cusp. Do we warn or don't we? The problem that we face is that these circumstances happen quite a lot. So when we have a thunderstorm, we're always on the cusp. We, we couldn't really put a warning out every time we had a thunderstorm because that would mean that the, the warning itself becomes almost useless because people just accuse you of, of crying wolf. So we need to be absolutely sure that we're going to see something significant before we issue the warning. Um, and as I said, for the bigger, broader scale events, we can certainly do that 24 hours in advance. But even with some of the smaller ones, we can do that around about 10 to 12 hours. And when we get right down to the nitty gritty of where it's actually going to occur, we can do that uh, down to a three hour time scale, as we saw for the thunderstorm in Perth in March 2010. Now, I noticed in the state budget there was some money for some additional monitoring south of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously a state responsibility, but does that help you at all? 
Well, the Bureau, when they're doing the forecast or a forecaster on duty, would like to take every piece of information they possibly can. So yes, the additional information helps us but it's never going to help us to pinpoint exactly where that tornado is going to be. What it will help us to do is to build a picture of what the atmosphere is actually doing right now uh, and how that structure is going to either help or hinder the development of a tornado. So any additional observations do help us, but not specifically for tornadoes. They're just going to help us in the overall pattern that's occurring across the state at that particular time. So no crystal balls? No crystal balls with that one, I'm afraid, no, no. Neil Bennett, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome.